Good morning and welcome to Bristol Citadel. In our meeting today we think of the theme of service and how we are free to serve the Lord. In the last few days we have seen many people uh, focus on the life of Prince Philip, the Duke of Edinburgh, as they have paid their respects to someone who has given a life of service, of public service. In many of the discussions, in many of the tributes, the focus was not so much on him, but on what he did through the Duke of Edinburgh's award scheme and other charities that he was patron of. And the focus came very strongly from himself when he didn't want the attention to be on him and what he did, but on what was done through the work that he was involved with, the focus on other people, on serving others. Today, the focus needs to be again on our lives as Christian people. What does it mean to serve as Christians? And the focus needs to be not on ourselves, but on what God has called us to do. And the nature of that work, that service, what it really means, and the difference it can make in our world. We're going to sing our first song just now. I serve a risen Saviour, he's in the world today. I know that he is living, whatever men may say. I see his hand of mercy, I hear his voice of cheer. And just the time I need him, he's always near. I serve a risen Saviour. May that be true for us as we consider what it means to truly serve. Let's sing just now.
Let's pray. Almighty Father, we thank you for your great salvation plan for mankind and your beloved Son, Lord Jesus Christ, who came into this world as a living sacrifice. In all his time on earth, he laid his life upon your will and loved and served the world. We pray, Father, that we become great examples of our Lord Jesus Christ. May we love and serve those around us who need our services and offerings of love. Lord Jesus Christ, we praise you and glorify you. We give you thanks for your great love. We praise you for you came to fulfil the Father's will. In your great love, you saved us from sin and condemnation and we thank you for this. We pray and pledge that we will walk with love. May we be of service to as many as we can in our lives as you called us to be, as it is the Father's will. Lord Jesus, may your life of love and service be our guide to love and service, the underprivileged, the abandoned and the needy among us. Lord Jesus, we love you with all of our heart, mind and soul. We heed your call to feed your sheep. We heed your call to look after your people who are scattered in darkness, abandoned, lonely and shunned by the world. Help us, Lord Jesus, as we prepare ourselves in your service to endure all things. May we give our time, our efforts and our resources and may we give our love in your blessed name. Amen.
to serve the purpose of God in my generation. I want to serve the purpose of God while I am alive. I want to give my life for something that'll last forever. Oh, I delight, I delight to do your will. Silver and gold while I am alive. I want to give my life for something that will last forever. Oh, I delight, I delight to do your will. The kingdom of God while I am alive. I want to give my life for something that'll last forever. Oh, I delight, I delight to do your will. What is on your heart? Show me what to do. Let me is what examples of service have you seen growing up? So for those of you that know me will know that I have been in the Salvation Army all my life. I went to my first meeting roughly around two weeks old. I'd like to say as a small baby but I was quite a big baby. Uh, so the best place to start um, is probably with my family. So uh, I've had grandparents and both my parents and other relations that were um, part of the local officer team, so the local leadership team. Uh, so my mum was the songster leader, my dad was the core sergeant major, uh, my nan helped run the over 60s programme. Um, so they, they were all responsible for their own sections, but also had... Um, a contribution, a regular contribution to how they could keep the core moving forward and um, ensuring that they were doing what was right for the church and the community. 
The other um, example I would use is probably retired officers. So I've seen a lot of retired officers over my 29 years, um, both at this corps and um, previous corps. So even though they've served their time, um, they continue to volunteer and work at the core or at the shops, um, just generally in the background sometimes without you even knowing it, um, reaching out to so many different people um, as much as they can. The other thing I would say is the those people that clean the hall, so you've got the the hall cleaners, the caretakers, they work so hard in the background um, and they ensure that the the centres are clean, tidy, welcoming and generally they would do anything for anyone. Uh, I've also seen friends travelling abroad um, to places like Kenya or Zimbabwe, um, various Africa, you've got all those different places um, to help build schools, water wells, just take out resources that unfortunately they aren't able to fund themselves in those countries. And uh, obviously we've got the core volunteers, um, C-O-R-E, core volunteers, as well as the core volunteers, who support the general mission as well. So that is how I see I've seen service growing up. How do I see service in my role is the next question. So um, as the community manager, um, my job is to um, ensure that we're meeting the need of our community as well as the church. So meeting the need of the community as a whole. So we are one. Um, so initially you need to we need to assess that need work out what the community need from us um, and then work out how we can make sure we meet that need together um, whilst also remaining positive relevant presence um, and showing god's love to everyone this can be done uh, on one-to-one -one conversations when people drop in asking for help um, or if they just come in to get a cup of tea or coffee um, but it can also be done in any of our groups we we in normal times run lots of support groups and lots of other groups within the centre uh, and there are lots of group interactions that happen in the background of those the next question is going forward what are things where people can serve in the future so what opportunities are there so service can take so many different forms so we've got um i feel like the obvious one is volunteering in the shops we are always looking for volunteers so even if you can offer just a few hours once a week every other week once a month whatever that is amazing and that is serving your community giving something back helping us because the the shops play such a vital role in how we can then continue to support the community so that's my little volunteering plug for the shops if if you have time available please do get in contact about volunteering um, and to help us serve the community the other way that you can help serve is um, by helping to volunteer when we're back up and running, seeing what groups we've got, outreach groups, um, whether that would be potentially serving tea and coffee or helping, um, helping with parent and toddlers, helping uh, sort the food bank out, bringing food in for the food bank, helping with the parcels that are going out or just simply helping to prepare the hall so extra cleaning hands or extra tidying or yeah just generally preparing the hall for events that could happen. Obviously um, over the last year we've sort of been reviewing programmes, reviewing outreach um, and we're, we're assessing what new opportunities there might be that we may need to respond to. So we're always looking for 
volunteers or anyone that's willing to offer some time to help us serve the community. Obviously, we recognise, though, that um, service isn't just about hands on support. So and we know that not everyone is capable of that. So prayer support is always needed and is another great form of service that can be offered for our church. So I hope that's answered the questions and uh, final little plug. Don't forget if you can volunteer, you're always welcome. Bye.
in our Bible reading today uh, from Luke 22, verses 24 to 27. We find out about the importance of serving and the importance that Jesus placed on it. We uh, pick up the verse just now where the disciples are disputing amongst themselves who should be the greatest. This is what it says. Verse 24. Also a dispute arose among them as to which of them was considered to be the greatest. Jesus said to them, The kings of the Gentiles lord it over them, and those who exercise authority over them call themselves benefactors. But you are not to be like that. Instead, the greatest among you should be like the youngest, and the one who rules like the one who serves. For who is greater, the one who is at the table or the one who serves? Is it not the one who is at the table? But I am among you as one who serves. Amen. Jesus emphasising the fact that we are called to serve others. Sometimes we want everything laid on for us, don't we? We want to be served. But we are to be people that serve others and to do so with the right attitude. A few verses spring to mind when I share this. Ephesians six seventeen, Serve wholeheartedly as if you were serving the Lord, not men. We have to remember, don't we, that it is God whom we're serving. 1 Chronicles 28, verse 9. Acknowledge the God of your Father and serve him with wholehearted devotion and with a willing mind. For the Lord searches every heart and understands every motive behind the thoughts. If you seek him, he will be found by you. But if you forsake him, he will reject you forever. And finally, in Colossians 3, 23 to 24. Whatever you do, work at it with all your heart, as working for the Lord, not for men since you know that you will receive an inheritance from the Lord as a reward. It is the Lord Christ you are serving. I wonder what your service looks like. Sometimes I think uh, people, when they have the idea about their particular work is much more important than others, they devalue and they discount what other people are doing. And I've met so many people who sometimes think that what they're offering isn't important and what they're doing isn't a, a vital job. Today, as we think of service, we want to recognise the importance of everything different people do. Every role and every job is important. We're all part of his, God's team, and we all have a part to play. Never ever discount what other people are doing and please recognise the value of your own worth of what you can provide. I found uh, a reading that I wanted to share with you from a book that I have often used, How to Be an Up Person in a Down World. And this emphasises the importance of every task. Every person has been gifted by God in some way. Furthermore, he has a destined time, place and means of employing that gift so that it is effective for God's eternal purpose. Nobody else can fulfil another person's identity or destiny. Each person must fulfil his own. A gardener who loves to garden can make plants thrive where no one else can. A dog trader who has a gift with animals can make even the most stubborn pooch behave. A short order cook can juggle six meals at once when most cooks can barely prepare one. Martin Luther King Jr. once said, If a man is called to be a, sweet a street sweeper, he should sweep streets even as Michelangelo painted or Beethoven composed music or Shakespeare wrote poetry. 
he should sweep street so well that all the hosts of heaven and earth will pause to say, here lived a great street sweeper who did his job well. Your gifts may be evident to others or perhaps known only to you. Either way, never discount your gifts or think they are of little benefit to the world. When you count your blessings, remember the unique gifts and talents God has given you. You have been gifted by the supreme gift giver. No race can prosper till it learns there is as much dignity in tilling a field as in writing a poem. Whatever your hand finds to do, do with your might. Ecclesiastes 9 verse 10. As I was reading that, I realised it's actually quite difficult to say street sweeper. And uh, I do apologise. I could have got someone else to read it, but then if I did that, I'd be reducing my service, wouldn't I? And thinking I can't do things. Street sweeper. I wonder what God is saying to you then. What can you do? What is there? What small task is there that God is calling to you to do just now? Some of the tasks are not always the most glamorous. They're not always the most upfront. And they're certainly not things we may want to do. But there are still things that we are called to do. I read about someone who was 79 years old and they were called to a task. Maybe if you're 79, you might think, oh, at this age, perhaps I just don't want to be taking on too much extra. But I know plenty of 79 year olds and plenty of people much older that are out there doing things and good for them. We need to keep going and keep doing. Well, this story was of a Roman Catholic nun by the name of Sister Emmanuel. When most folks would like to think of retiring in Arizona during the winter and travelling around the world during the summer, this woman fell on her knees and prayed that God would send her to the most desperate place on earth. As she said in the interview, Be careful what you pray for, as your prayer might be answered. Her prayer was answered, and at the time of the interview, this elderly French nun was serving God in the city of Garbage, a ghetto in Cairo, Egypt. Every day she would rise at 4.30am to begin her work among the 10,000 untouchable residents who managed to stay alive by sorting through refuge, hoping to sell bottles and tin cans. At 9am she would be in her own hut, teaching 40 Christian and Muslim children to read and write. She has also worked with the government to provide better housing. In her quiet ministry of serving, Sister Emmanuel has helped improve the living conditions of many children, youths and adults. How appropriate is her name, Emmanuel, which means God with us. Diane Sawyer was the one interviewing Sister Emmanuel. At one point, Sawyer asked her if there, were, there might be a reward for her work. The elderly nun pointed to a painting hanging on her wall. It was a picture of angels with hands joined dancing in the celestial kingdom. One of these days, said Sister Emmanuel, they will offer me their hand and I will dance in the kingdom of heaven with them. God's servant there, Sister Emmanuel, dancing in heaven as one who shared her fruit of the Spirit with those who were in need. When we have been set free by Christ, we have been set free to serve. So, you may not be 79. You may be, like me, just 29. Oh, I've made an error there, but I won't go back on that one either. Whatever you're called to do, serve, serving the Lord. Do it wholeheartedly, do it sincerely. And think, where is the need just now? What can I do? Look out and be the person that brings change and brings positive things 
into our communities. Keep serving. We are saved to serve.
Lord, thank you for letting us work with you to share your joy with the world. Help us not take for granted the gift it is to share your gospel to the nations and to our neighbours. Help us to have eyes to see the needs around us and to respond to those needs in joy and hope. Thank you so much, Lord, for your love and care over us. In Jesus' name, Amen.